Hey everybody, how you doing tonight? Welcome to Facebook Live, CCWC Facebook Live. Are you ready for our countdown? Three, two, one. Woo! Here we go. Oh, I got something good for you tonight. Are you ready? Deuteronomy 18. Deuteronomy 18. It is awesome and it is fantastic. It's something everybody should uh, read. It's something that everybody should be a part of. Deuteronomy chapter 18. By the way, how is everybody? I hope you're doing good. Oh, I hope you're doing real good. You need to know that Jesus loves you. Jesus appreciates you. He died for you, shed his blood, rose again, that you can have everlasting life. You know what? There just could be. I was thinking there could be somebody who is going to be watching tonight that has never known, that has never received Christ as their personal Savior and Lord, that has never surrendered to the voice of Jesus. Yeah, it'd be good for you to do that tonight. Oh, there's somebody, Sean Kennedy, go Purdue. Oh, yes. Purdue is three and two. Got my Boilermaker hat. Look at this. Got my Boilermaker shirt. Look at that. Purdue all the way across. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Hey, Jeremy, how you doing? You're doing great? That is good. Hello to everybody that's joining us. And uh, again, if, if there's somebody that, is, that has come and, uh, and joined us that does not know Christ, you'll receive him tonight. God bless you, Nick and Laurel. You guys are awesome. Uh, receive Christ tonight. Ask him into your heart as your personal Savior and Lord. Hope you're having a good dinner, Sharon. And uh, my dinner's waiting. It's getting cold. But I told Susie, I got to do Facebook Live. Just got to do it. Cannot do it. And uh, have to do it. All right, Deuteronomy 18. Hope everybody's turning there. Deuteronomy chapter 18. Don't forget uh, on this Facebook Live, online, Facebook Live, online church, uh, every Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Don't forget, to, uh, we're here to pray for you. And not just me, but everybody who's watching. We have a great audience. We, we have anywhere from, oh, I want to be right, 1,200, 1,300 to 2,000 people. Can you believe that? <laughs> Watch every... Uh, Wednesday night, and those who can't get in on Wednesday night, they watch on Thursday. So that includes Wednesday, Thursday. And, you know, you get a few stragglers um, the rest of the time. Hey, there's Jack Wolf. Hey, Jack, how you doing? Good to see you. Well, I can't see you. <laughs> Glad that you're with us. Hey, Ray, can't say go Patriots, go Bucks. Oh, my goodness. Ray Franchi. Hey, Ray, you're in Alabama now? We got people from all over the place. We got people from Alabama. We got people from uh, Atlanta, Georgia. We got people from uh, Wisconsin that are joining us right now. That's awesome. It's wonderful. It's great to have you. Uh oh, now now we got all the football people coming on. Go Steelers. No way. No, we're not Steelers fans. If you live in the Tampa Bay area, you got to be Buccaneer fans. You gotta be Buccaneer fans. There, there's there's no way about it. You live in the Tampa Bay area, you're Lightning fans, you're Buccaneer fans, and you're Ray fans. So the Bucks won this past week. They're two and three. The Lightning start tomorrow night. They're gonna win the Stanley Cup. So now people are making fun of my Purdue stuff. They're telling me to take my Purdue stuff off. I don't think you want me to take my Purdue stuff off because what's underneath wouldn't look too pretty. <laughs> Just being truthful. Just being truthful. Anyway. We're, looking, we're trying to get to Deuteronomy 18. Uh-oh, we got people from Michigan watching. Hey, Terry. Oh, you know what? We got, picture, we got people from uh, Florida that are watching. Now, look at this. We got people joining in from Virginia. They're at their son's baseball game, and they're watching it, and they're showing everybody that's watching the baseball game. I mean, <laughs> that is awesome. Hey, Kim, while you're on tonight... Um, Need a bunch of prayer warriors for the next few Thursday nights. I mean, we really need everybody on board since we're heading into Halloween. So if you could just call everybody, uh, email everybody, text everybody. Need a bunch of prayer warriors. Uh, tomorrow, Thursday, at 6 o'clock, 6.40, our Gideon's 300 prayer meeting in the ministry center. So Kim, just call out to everybody that can come. Be a part, especially with uh, Halloween coming up. And I'm uh, not scared of that, but just... Uh, very important that we really be praying and seeking the face of the Lord. Uh, Christina Buchanan David just joined us, and uh, her mom just went to be with the Lord. Her name was Ethelene Buchanan. 
and want to say a little tribute about Ethlene. Again, none of you are going to know her, um, but I knew her. She was awesome. Uh, she was one of the individuals who helped me start the church in Bluffton. I used to show up with uh, just two families there on a Sunday, and uh, one of them was always the Buchanans. They were there every other week because Ernie, uh, Ernie worked every other Sunday. And man, let me tell you something. Not only you, Kim, get all the prayer warriors out, and uh, I'm calling them out too. Need it during this month of October. Ethelene was faithful. She was a prayer warrior. Just think, two families. We had two families for about a year, two or three families. She stuck in and she is faithful. She was a prayer warrior. And uh, she passed away. She went to heaven. She's with the Lord. And I truly miss her. And uh, just want to pay tribute to Ethelene. She's one of those individuals that you think wouldn't be at the front of the line when uh, you know everybody's getting their rewards. But I can guarantee you, she's going to get more rewards than a lot of these people that do... Uh, these big TV shows and her authors, and I'm not putting them down. Um, she was just awesome. So um, we'll all see her soon because the Lord's coming back. The Lord's coming back. All right, let me try to get to Deuteronomy 18. When you come into the land, talking about verse 9. When you come into the land which the Lord your God is giving you, you shall not learn to follow the abominations of those nations. So the Lord was telling Israel, look, you're going to start a new nation. You're going to have your own country. And when you go to your own country, when I give you this new land, I'm just making a long story short, I don't want you to carry into this new land the abominations of those nations, the abominations of those other nations. Don't worship their gods. Don't take on their values. Um, don't do what they do. Make sure that you follow the statutes and you follow the principles that I've set down for you in the Word of God. Verse 10, Deuteronomy 18. There shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or his daughter pass through the fire, or one who practices witchcraft, or a soothsayer, or one who interprets omens, or a sorcerer, or one who conjures spells, or a medium, or a spiritist, or one who calls up the dead. For all who do these things are an abomination to the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord your God drives them out from before you. You shall be blameless before the Lord your God. For these nations which you will dispossess, listen to soothsayers and diviners. But as for you, the Lord your God has not appointed such for you. I thought since we're heading into the Halloween season that um, I wanted to share a little bit about witchcraft and about demonic things. Not that that's the priority in life. The priority in life is Jesus Christ and uh, following him and knowing him. But I've noticed at times there's a lot of born-again believers who um, get into witchcraft, divination, um, um, horoscopes, astrology, etc. And here's what the Lord says. Again, you read it for yourself so you don't think I'm preaching at you. I'm right with you. Deuteronomy 18 and verses 9 all the way to 14. All right? Deuteronomy 18 and verse 9, verses 9 all the way through verses 14. Very important that you understand it says that all who do these things practice what? Practice anything that's demonic. For all of you who do these things, they're an abomination to the Lord. So anybody who has anything to do with demonic activity is an abomination to the Lord. You say, well, I thought the Lord loves me. Well, listen, the Lord loves everybody. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Uh, Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8 says, Nothing can separate the believer from the love of God. So the Lord our God, the true living God, he loves everyone. But that doesn't mean he approves of all the things that everyone does. And one of the things we're not to be involved in is demonic activity. We're not to be involved with horoscopes. Any of you that are reading your horoscopes, the Bible says it's an abomination to the Lord. It's an abomination to the Lord. Let me read it to you. For all who do these things are an abomination to the Lord. And because of these abominations, God drives them out before you. But you shall be blameless before the Lord your God. Somebody says astrology is demonic. <clears throat> astrology is demonic. Why doesn't somebody answer that for me? I know what the answer is. Astrology is demonic. Don't read your horoscopes. You're not a Libra. You're not a Capricorn. You're not a Scorpio. I don't even like to say those words. You don't have anything to do with that anymore. 
That is demonic. And the Lord says, don't have anything to do with it. Don't take the values of unbelievers and other nations and other countries and bring them into your home. I'm getting a lot of... Uh, getting a lot of people saying that they used to read horoscopes. I'm glad you used to, because now you're a born-again believer. And uh, we don't get involved in any of that stuff. Um, we have nothing to do with horoscopes. We have nothing to do with seances. You say, what's a seance? Calling the dead, calling them to life. You say, does that happen? Well, no, it never happens, but those are demonic manifestations. Now, let me give you one here that maybe some of you Christians don't know. What about ghosts? I'm not talking about the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, we call him more aptly. Ghosts are demonic manifestations. So are ghosts real? Well, yes, they are real. Ghosts are real, and you want nothing to do with them. They're not these funny little things that we see on cartoons that are chasing kids around, etc. They are demonic manifestations. So sometimes people will say, I saw a ghost in a haunted house. I saw a ghost in a graveyard. I saw a ghost wherever, walking down the street. They can be any place. What are those? Those are demon manifestations. So you don't want to have anything to do with ghosts. You don't want to have anything to do with ghosts. Um, I think it's very, very important also. Again, I'm just going to share this with you. You can do with it what you want. You shouldn't have anything to do with Halloween either. Halloween, now remember, the day Halloween is not the enemy's day. It's not the devil's day. It's the Lord's day. Every day is the Lord's day. This is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. But Christians shouldn't have anything to do with Halloween for this reason. It's demonic activity. It's witchcraft. And the Bible says here, listen to this. There shall not be found among you anyone, anyone who follows the abomination of the nations. Now we know a lot of people are going to say, hey, it's just kids going out for candy. Well, again, why do we want to have anything to do with a holiday, a lot of people celebrate as a holiday, that has nothing to do with Jesus. You say we celebrate Christmas, well that has to do with Jesus. We celebrate Thanksgiving, that has to do with Jesus. So those holidays are, are talking about the Lord. You even say New Year's is a holiday, well yeah, we're starting a new year off with the Lord. The number eight is the, the number of new beginnings. So we're starting a new beginning every new year, a new start, a fresh start. So if I was you as a born-again believer, read Deuteronomy 18. I want you to read it yourself and come up with the, with the right conclusion. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 9 to 14. I wouldn't have anything to do with a holiday that has anything to do with ghosts, goblins, witchcraft, witches, etc. Um, guess what we are? We're born-again believers. We're to be different than the world system. Again, some of you might be saying, well, what about Christmas? Well, that celebrates the birth of Jesus Christ. That's what we do. We celebrate the birth of Christ. Halloween just isn't some type of a play day or you just, you just uh, dress up your kids and you go out and, and uh, go to all these houses and get all this candy. You know, somebody has to take a stand. Really, somebody has to take a stand. And then we never sent our kids out on, on Halloween. We didn't do that. Now, when people came to our house, we gave them tracts and we witnessed to them. We want a lot of people to the Lord. So why don't you use Halloween as an outreach? It is a time when the Lord's going to send people to you. And so what do you give them? Give them a tract. Tell them about Jesus. Pass out Jesus is the answer bracelets. Pass out Jesus is the answer material. That's what you need to do. You know, Halloween's a pagan holiday. I mean, just it's a pagan holiday, and it opens up the door to the occult. It opens up the door to the occult. So we're to have nothing to do with horoscopes. Again, I'm reading out of Deuteronomy 18, um, verses 9 through verses 14. We're not to have anything to do with omens, sorcerer, uh, conjure spells, a medium, a spiritist. How about those guys on TV that can bend knives in half and bend spoons in half, whatever? You say, what is that? That's demonic activity. That's demonic activity. Mediums, demonic activity. What about people that can tell fortunes? Well, just read the book of Acts, chapter 16. Paul cast a demon out of a woman who told the fortunes of people, who was a fortune teller. Listen, you don't need to go to Madame Lola. <laughs> Why do you want to go to a house 
where they have a crystal ball and the house isn't very nice and the car in the driveway isn't very nice and they're going to tell you your future. That is the most stupid thing. I'm sorry, I'm not saying you're stupid. I'm just saying that's the most stupid thing in the world. You don't go to a fortune teller. You go to the Lord. You go to Jesus. He knows your future. He has the plan for you that you're going to follow in your life. He has the plan for you. He has the plan for your family. He has the plan for your children. He has the plan for your grandchildren. He has the plan for your business. He has everything planned out. You go to Jesus. You don't need Madam Lola. You say, you're an old fuddy-duddy. Six and stones can break my bones. Words can never harm me. It doesn't bother me what people call me. Listen, over all these years of preaching in any church, <clears throat> people left the church, people get mad, people come to the church, people call me names, people trash me. It's, it doesn't deter me. <laughs> Now, if I'm doing something wrong, I learn from it. Yes, I've made mistakes. I learn from the mistakes and I repent. And I go the right direction. But listen, if I'm preaching the right word, which I am tonight, people get mad. That's tough. Um, here's somebody, listen what they say. As an ex-practicing pagan in which it is all demonic and the enemy wants you to think it is innocent and fun. It's lies and it's straight from hell. How about that? Testimony. As an ex-practicing pagan and witch, it is all demonic, and the enemy wants you to think it is innocent and fun. It is lies straight from hell. Whoa! We just got a testimony of somebody who was a witch. And I know the person. I know it's true. And that's it. The enemy wants to deceive you. Listen, the enemy... The en <laughs> Somebody just called me a fuddy-duddy, but they said they still love me. <laughs> and I know who it is, but I won't say who it is on air live. So now we just had a witch give a testimony. Somebody who was a witch, somebody who was a pagan and in the occult. Listen, the enemy deceives. He's a deceiver. And any of us could be deceived. And he does. He wants you to think that it's just an innocent time of the year. Just a fun time of the year. Oh, they just dress up as a cowboy. Oh, they just go out and collect candy. Listen, again, have nothing to do with anything that's demonic. I'm going to say something else, and again, I am a fuddy-duddy. Somebody just testified, but it's true. I want you to understand something. You can't read Harry Potter books. Sorry. You can't read Harry Potter books. Why? It's evil. It's wicked. You say, well, Pastor Schreier, what's the difference between watching that, Lord of the Rings, something like that? Well, listen, there's going to be movies that have good and evil, but good triumphs evil. Roger just says, I love this. If Madam Lola knows the future, why hasn't she won the lottery? <laughs> if Madam Lola knows the future, why hasn't she won the lottery? I tell you, I got to give props to Roger Clemetian. That guy is awesome. I, <laughs> he not only comes to the church, really, Roger, I consider Roger a good friend. He is just awesome. He makes me laugh. He I don't know. He's got the spirit. He's got the spirit of Jay Leno. I mean, can you do that? A sanctified spirit of Jay Leno. He may, <laughs> he just makes me roll on the floor laughing. I tell you, Roger, props to you. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm sorry. <laughs> what are you laughing about? Oh, he put on there. If Madam Lola knows the future, why hasn't she won the lottery? I mean, that was good, I tell you. I'm sorry, maybe you didn't like it, but I... <laughs> Roger, keep them coming. I won't, be able to <laughs> I won't be able to share anything while I'm laughing, though. Listen, have nothing... <laughs> yeah, I just told Susie. He said, if Madam Lola knows the future, why hasn't she won the lottery? <laughs> Susie's even laughing, Roger. If you get Susie laughing... She's really a clown. <laughs> Susie just said, Madam Lola's really a clown. Oh, Roger, do you like that one? Clowns to the left of me, jokers to the right. Here I am, stuck in the middle with Jesus. Whew. You know what? I think this uh, broadcast is getting a little bit off point here. Let me, let me get back on point. It's my wife's fault. My wife's fault. <laughs> Somebody just said the Holy Spirit's all over me. I hope that's what it is. I hope that's what it is. Now let's get back to the point. You can have nothing to do with that's demonic. Harry Potter is totally demonic. Now, can I take it a step farther? 
I'm going farther with you tonight. Now, clean house. You say, yeah, I got to dust the house. No, clean house. You got a clean house. Bunny trail. Yeah, I was on a bunny trail. I'm sorry, Ray. I'm back. <laughs> I, I do a preaching class. I tell them not to get on bunny trails, but this is different. We're just having fun. This is casual, conversational, and we're learning Deuteronomy 18. So here's where we are, Deuteronomy 18, 9 through 14. Have nothing to do... <laughs> Somebody just said, Susie had nothing to do with my deviation from the topic. Yes, I'm blaming the woman just like Adam did Eve. <laughs> Now again, Mark, you got me off track. Let me get back on track again. Have nothing to do with demonic. So Harry Potter's got to go. Clean house. So why don't we all, I'm including myself, let's go through our homes tonight. <clears throat> let's go through our house tonight. And, and let's get rid of anything that has anything to do with demonic things. Could be books. Could be DVDs. Hi, Jacoby. My grandson just came in. Hi, Jacoby. Is that Susie too? Yeah, that's me. I'm doing Facebook Live. <laughs> <laughs> How about that? You want to sit on my lap? Uh -huh. Okay. I think everybody might want to see my grandson. Yeah. There's, you got to take your fingers out of your mouth there while you're looking in there. See that? That's Jacoby. And uh, when he comes to GP's house, guess what? He's not going to find anything demonic. Nope, he's not going to find anything demonic. We cleaned house... Years and years and years ago. So if you got any Harry Potter stuff, you got to throw it out. You say, I'll give it to somebody else. No. You need to throw it out. In fact, if you burn it, demons might come out of it. You need to get rid of any DVDs. You need to get rid of any movies. You need to get rid of any reading materials that have anything to do with demonic things because you're opening yourself up to demon oppression. Listen, I'm not stupid. I've been in Christianity for 40-some years now. Demons are real. Demons are out there. Demons are real and demons are out there. And it's very important that you understand that you can open up a door to demon oppression into your home, into your life. There's people that come to church and they say, man, I'm oppressed with depression and, and uh, anger. And Well, you know what? Clean house. You've got a clean house. And you've got to get that stuff out of your house. Are you leaving? Are you leaving? All right. Every, say bye-bye to everybody. Bye. Bye. All right. Go see Grandma. Okay. All righty. That was Jacoby. Grandkids just came over. They're awesome. So you got to clean house. You got to get rid of all that stuff. Are you ready for another one? Woo! No. Ready for another one? Here we go. Statues. Oh, statues. Statues of what? False gods? Buddhas? Woo! Buddhas? Get that out of there. Get that out of your house. Come on. Listen, we as born-again believers have to take a stand. Now, we're taking a stand on what the Word of God says. We're in Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 9 to 14. Can I read it again? There shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or his daughter pass through the fire, or one who practices witchcraft, or a soothsayer, or one who interprets omens, or a sorcerer, or one who conjures spells, or a medium, or a spiritist, or one who calls up the dead. For all who do these things are an abomination to the Lord, and because of these abominations, the Lord your God drives them out from before you. You shall be blameless before the Lord your God, for these nations which you will dispossess listen to soothsayers and diviners. But as for you, the Lord God has not appointed such for you. So I just had a couple people just uh, send me a message, just simply saying, uh, I got a clean house again. Yeah, we all do. We all do. You know, it's, it's easy for us just to allow things in and just to kind of get a little bit lazy and, oh, you know, this, oh, it's cute. You know, somebody just sent this to me from China or Thailand and nothing wrong with it, and this little statue and somebody praying. No, no, I, I can't let it into my house. Here's what it says in the book of Ephesians. 
Do not give the enemy an occasion against you. Got that? Do not give the enemy an occasion against you. You can leave your back door open just that much and mosquitoes will get in. If you don't have the right insulation around your door, those little cockroaches can get real small and flat and they will get in. It doesn't take much space to allow something into your house. Guess what? You just have one little book, one little statue, one little demonic thing in your house can release demonic powers, can release demon spirits into your home, into your family, into your business, into your ministry. There's times even at CCWC and other uh, churches I've been to and pastored in that we had to get rid of things that people were bringing into the classrooms. And we had to go through books. Even at CCWC, we try to make sure. I mean, some people sneak things in, but we try to do everything we can to make sure that we don't allow things that are demonic into classrooms. Because it's very important to protect the younger generation. A lot of generations today and a lot of people today just think that anything goes. You got to be very, very important about the TV and the what you watch. Again, I'm not going to tell you what to watch, what not to watch. You got the Holy Spirit in you. But you got to watch things that are demonic. You got to watch things that are demonic. Music. You got to know the lyrics. You know, a lot of people get into music, and really, a lot of people, they don't even look at, the, uh, at what's being sung. They just like the beat of the music. But man, listen to the words. The words are talking about killing yourself sometimes. Talking about secular music. The words are talking about taking drugs. The words are talking about demon activity. Other religions. Jesus isn't the way, but we like the beat. We like the beat. But we don't listen to the words. You need to listen to some of the words. You need to listen to some of the words. So you got to watch out for TV. Now listen, all TV isn't bad. Everything on the internet isn't bad. We as Christians, we can get so extreme that we become weird and nuts. But I think it's very, very important that we go by what the scriptures say now. I don't think that anybody can tell everybody what they need to take out of their house, what they need to watch, what they need to wear, what they need to do, what pictures needed to be in their house, etc. You have the Holy Spirit living within you. You have the Word of God. Be a critical thinker. I've never done that. I've never told people what they can do and what they can't do. What I've told them is, here's what the Word of God says. And I just read you Deuteronomy 18, 9 through 14, so read it. And look up all the definitions of the demonic things that society, that a nation can be involved in. Look at the things that you watch. Look at the things that you sometimes wear. What are you putting on? T-shirts, etc. Look at some of the things you watch on the internet, on the TV, that you read, movies that you go to. Just pray and say, Lord, is this pleases you? Is this something that you want me to watch? Is this something that you want me to uh, listen to? Is this something you want me to, uh, to see with my eyes? Is this something that you want me to wear? So I think it's very, very important. I think it's very, very important that you just say to the Lord, Lord, is this something you want me to have in the house? If not, he'll tell you. The Holy Spirit will show you. And then just keep reading the word. Keep reading the word. I think we can tell when something at least is blatantly demonic. And we just get rid of it. And we shouldn't support any church, any organization that supports things like Harry Potter. No way. I'm not giving them a dime. That supports anything demonic. I don't care what it is. I don't care if it be CCWC. But I can guarantee you while I'm pastor, we're not supporting anything that's demonic that I know about. If somebody does something and I find out about it, I'll nip it in the bud, as Barney Fife used to say. Nip it, nip it, nip it, nip it, nip it in the bud. So read the Word of God. Find out the things that are demonic. Find out the things that are that are going on. And again, have no part of Halloween. It's It's not an evil day. Every day is God's day. The day of Halloween is God's day. Just don't be involved in what's going on. We're not to have one foot in the world, one foot in the church. One foot in the world and one foot in the church. So be very wise. Be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Be wise as serpents 
and harmless as doves. Now remember, the enemy is a counterfeiter. He's a counterfeiter. He can make things look good. He can counterfeit you're a, a man or a woman that you're seeing, that you think should be your husband or your, or your wife. He can counterfeit salvation. Some people think they're saved. They're not saved. They're not born again. He can counterfeit healings. He can counterfeit a lot of different things. In the last days, the false prophet, it says in the book of Revelation, is going to cast fire down from heaven. That's a false prophet. There's counterfeit prophets. He's a counterfeiter. Somebody just asked me a question about Halloween. Can we hand out uh, Jesus is the answer bracelets and answer cards? Yes. Use it. Use it. Use the ha Halloween. Not to hide. Use it to witness. Hand out tracts. Witness to people too when they come. Ask them. Pop the question. If you died today and stood before God and he said, why should I let you into heaven? What would you tell him? Witness to people. Get them saved. Get them born again. Roger said something really good. Too often we get a personal conviction and try to place that on everyone. That's good preaching, Roger. That's really good, Roger. Yes. And uh, the Lord will show us what we're to be a part of, and he'll show us what we're not to be a part of. That's where personal conviction, again, listening to the Holy Spirit comes into. That's for sure. The Holy Spirit's in us. The Holy Spirit is in it. So, again, use Halloween. Somebody just came up with a good idea. Use Halloween to witness. Pop the question to everybody that comes to your door. Give them a Jesus is the answer card. Witness to them. Lead them to the Lord. Then bring them to church on Sunday. That's what it, this is all about. Again, don't hide behind a couch because a four-year-old's coming dressed up as Superman. <laughs> okay, we don't have to be involved in Halloween, but the Lord is bringing people to our door, neighbors and friends. What a time to witness to them. Tell them about Jesus and pop the question. Very, very important that you do that. So we're not to read our horoscopes. Nope. We're not to have anything to do with seances, which people try to talk to the dead, communicate with the dead. Nope. Ghosts are demon forces. Ghosts are demon forces. Yes, they are. We're not to have anything to do with spiritists or mediums. We're not... <laughs> And Roger just said, we're not to have anything to do with clowns. That's exactly correct. I know a few clowns, not the bad ones that are going around. There's a few clowns tonight on Facebook Live. Not the bad ones, they're just clowns. We're not to have anything to do I said horoscopes, didn't I? Um, we're not to have anything to do with tarot cards. I was just thinking of some other things. We're not to, oh, here's one, not to have anything to do with Ouija boards. Not to have anything to do with Ouija boards. Not to have anything to do with things like Harry Potter. And again, I think one of the things somebody, I think it was Lisa came on here and said not to bash the Joy FM. I agree. We're not to bash any church, any ministry. But again, if any ministry, CCWC included, is promoting something that's demonic, that is not good. And the people need to tell them it's not good. It doesn't mean you can't listen to it. But uh, you need to call them if they're doing that, saying, hey, don't promote Harry Potter. That's demonic. And if I knew that, I would call him in love. Because I know the people that are doing the Joy FM, they're good people. But again, it's easy for all of us just to swerve off just a little bit. And I hope that if CCWC was doing something like that, oh my goodness, I hope that you would call me or let me know and say, hey, Pastor Strayer, you need to look into that. And again, I hope you wouldn't bash me or bash the church. If I would look into it and see that it's wrong or demonic, yeah, I wouldn't have anything to do with it. Here's Diane Mahoney. Here's Diane Mahoney. She haven't, she's having a follow-up with Moffitt. Um, she's been eight years cancer-free, but she found a lump under her arm. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I just pray for Diane. I pray that, Lord, that lump would go away in the name of the Lord. I pray that, Lord, that a lump would go away. And I pray she would be cancer-free. Come on, let's all pray for Diane. I pray that she would be cancer-free. Diane, receive that healing. Put your hand on that lump under your arm right now. And Lord, as Diane lays hands on that lump, you're dissolving it, Lord. It's going down to nothing. It's going down to nothing. In the name of Jesus, we believe, Diane, as you go to uh, Moffitt Cancer Center, there's not going to be anything wrong. I want you to claim it. I want you to receive it. I want you to believe the Lord for it. You've been eight years cancer-free. We're going to make it to nine years. We're going to make it to nine years. 
Hey, while, uh, while you're listening to me tonight, don't forget to go to our Wake America 365 Facebook page. Um, that's an outreach of CCWC. And man, is 2017 blowing up. We got three churches in Pennsylvania we're going to be going to. We got one now in Fort Wayne, Indiana. We're going to Detroit in March. We're going to Attica, Michigan in August. We're going to Indianapolis again in September. We, we're just, I mean, the whole month of January, we have teams going out locally here. And we're going to Palm Harbor, supposedly going to Palm Harbor in uh, February. So if you know of a church, of a pastor that would love to have Awake America 365 come, we're revivalists. That's what we do when we go out. I don't go out as a pastor. I go out as a revivalist, man. Get that church on fire. Get that people praying, evangelizing. Get people saved. Get people on fire for the Lord. Of course, I do that at CCWC too, but we do that when we go out. So we're filling up. Pray for us that more churches would want us to come. We're not in it for money. We all have jobs. We all work. So we're just do it to get revival. Our, our nation needs revival. Our nation needs revival. Who is that? Oh, that's Jacoby. Our nation needs revival, needs renewal. And uh, we are seeing it happen. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit slow. No, no, no. No, no, no. It's going to be a little bit slow. Sorry, I had to check on my grandson there. He's messing some things up. It's a good mess. Um, it's a slow process, but the Lord is doing it. So every community we go to, we link in with the church, do the Jesus is the answer also, and they go off into their communion. We are seeing fire prayer meetings started. And by the way, why don't you all come tomorrow night to a fire prayer meeting? How long is it going to take you to come? <laughs> some of you have been to church for years and years and years. Come on. Come to the fire prayer meeting 6 to 640. Your kids aren't going to die if they come to church. Change your habits. Change your ways. Come on. Tomorrow at 6 to 640, crying out prayer meeting in the ministry center. Come on, Tim. Come to the fire prayer meeting tomorrow night. Come on, Joy. Come to the fire prayer meeting tomorrow night. Come on, Luz. Come to the prayer meeting tomorrow night. Come on, Steve Branham. Come to the fire prayer meeting tomorrow night. Come on, just drive in. <laughs> Drive in from South Carolina. Michelle, get a ride. Somebody will bring you. You got a lot of friends at CCWC. Come on, just call somebody and get a ride. Will somebody give Michelle a ride? I did this last time, Michelle. Will somebody give Michelle a ride? Oh, Nick has a huge hernia. I don't like that. Come on, let's all pray for Nick. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray for Nick right now. I pray that you would touch him by the power of your spirit, Lord. I pray that hernia would be completely healed. Lord, we pray for Karen. Karen has a back problem. She pulled her muscle. Lord, heal Karen's back. Heal Karen's back right now, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Heal Karen's back. We're praying for Nick. We're praying for Kara. Karen right now in the name of Jesus. Michelle, call Linda Jones. She said she would get you. Michelle, you still there? Call Linda Jones. <clears throat> call Linda Jones. Oh, thank you, Jacoby. Look what Jacoby gave me, another Purdue hat. <laughs> I got about 50 of them. Here you go, Jacoby. Michelle, there you go. You got a ride. Call Linda Jones. And uh, both of you need to be in prayer meeting. Anna, you need to be in prayer meeting tomorrow night. Richard, you need to be in prayer meeting tomorrow night. Amy, you need to be in prayer meeting tomorrow night. Don, you need to be in prayer meeting tomorrow night. I'm on all of you. Come on. You know, all of us want revival. All of us talk about revival. Um, but we don't come to prayer meeting. Come on, let's come. Let's pray. Come on, Penny, fly in. <laughs> Penny's all the way up in Indiana right now. Evansville, Indiana. Penny used to be at the church. Come on, Penny, move back. Move back. You know, we're seeing some healings. The Lord is touching Nick. The Lord is touching Nick right now. The Lord is touching uh, Karen and her back. I really feel some healing. Because you know what? We pushed out all the demonic forces. When you push out all the demonic forces, guess what? The Lord can really move. The Lord can really move. Well, you can come after volleyball. Just come after volleyball. You know what? Even if your children have sports and ends at 730, bring them to church. Don't go home. Go to the cafe, get something to eat. Come to church. Come on, let's make church a priority. It doesn't mean you won't have things for your kids on those nights, but when they're done, come and be a part. Come and be a part. Yes. I think it's time that we uh, really come and be a part. 
Let's stop making excuses. Yes, you will be at prayer. Michelle, you can get a ride with Linda all the time, so no more excuses. You need to be there Sunday too. Uh-oh, somebody from South Carolina just said church is a priority. Yes, it is. Church is a priority. Church is a priority. The Bible says, forsake not the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is. Only believe. Only believe. Hey, Jacoby, Miss Lisa says she needs your help again in children's ministry on Sunday. Come um, up here. Um, Miss Lisa. Um, um, Grandma said, Mama said, I'm my grandma is Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right. You got two grandmas. Yeah. Yes, Alicia, our church is in Newport Ritchie, Florida. Why don't you come and join us? Okay, why don't you come and join us? Thank you. Newport, Wichy, Florida is where our church is located. I don't want to sit on your... You want to leave? No. Okay. Newport, Wichy, Florida, Alicia. It's a little bit uh, north of uh, Tampa. Hey, Solomon, how you doing? That's Steve's son. Doing well. Pasco County? Yeah, we're in Pasco County. I don't want to Newport, Wichy, Florida. Come and join us tomorrow night, 6 o'clock. I don't want to sit on your house. Okay, you can go. Don't forget... Miss Lisa, there's Jacoby. He's going to help you Sunday in class. So, Alicia, come and join us. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. If you're in Pasco County, we're in Newport Ritchie. Come and join us. And to be a part, 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock prayer meeting, 7 o'clock. A church. Oh, that's right, Bez. And, Bez, I'm expecting you and your wife in prayer meeting. Come on. Bring all the kids to prayer meeting. Come on, Lisa. Be in prayer meeting tomorrow night. Oh, yeah, we're praying for Mikey. Come on, Heather and Mike, join us for prayer meeting. Join us for prayer meeting. Yes, Rebecca, we pray for Mike right now. We ask the Lord you would heal her son, Lord. Take care of that mass in the name of Jesus. Take care of that mass in the name of Jesus. We thank you for that, Father. We thank you for that, Father. Well, Steve, move back. All these people are moving away. Come on, move back. We need all the people to move back. Oh, you are behind my house in on 54. Yeah, we're right there. We're on Trouble Creek Road, 6825 Trouble Creek Road. So we'll see you tomorrow night. <clears throat> Elisha, we'll see you tomorrow night. And uh, there's a welcome fellowship right after the service. And uh, come up and see me. Introduce yourself to me. Well, even if there's a baseball game, come when the baseball game's over. Get there at 8 o'clock. Yeah. Oh my goodness, look at that. Yes. Sorry, can't ignore the grandkids. Susie, what time is it? It's a quarter till eight. Well, we're kind of gearing down tonight. Gearing down tonight. We've been talking about the demonic. You're welcome, Rebecca. And uh, see you in prayer meeting tomorrow night, Rebecca. Bring a whole, bring a whole carload. I'm believing for a great outpouring of the Spirit. We're going to take authority over the enemy tomorrow night. We're going to take authority over the enemy tomorrow night. We're entering into the Halloween season. Demons are out a little bit more. Witches are out a little bit more. Do you realize witches are fasting against churches and pastors? Mm-hmm. Yep. Come on, Anna. Make sure you're in prayer meeting in church tomorrow. Let's go. Let's go. Yep, we're all going to be there at 6 o'clock. Come on, no more excuses. No more excuses for any of us. I'm in there a little bit earlier. We're going to pray in tongues. We're going to pray in the Spirit. We're going to come against powers of hell. We're not going to give the devil an occasion against us. He might be beating on us, but we're going to beat back. He's defeated. We pray from a place of victory. We're not looking for the victory. We, we uh, pray from a place of victory. Hi, Eleanor. They moved to uh, the Atlanta area years ago. Hi, Eleanor. Susie just said, hi, Eleanor. And uh, we miss you guys. We still need some help in... Uh, Helping hands. Charlene, keep praying. I still think you're supposed to help us with Awake America 365. You know, you've been on my heart. I was going to come and bug you about it. Not to make you feel guilty. Come on, Charlene. Maybe you can go once a year with us. Come on, join the team. Join the team. Pray about it some more. I'm praying for you. Come on, Charlene. Put a little pressure on you. Not guilt. All right, everybody. You have a good night.
And you guys are awesome. We appreciate you being a part of Facebook Live. Make sure you share this with everybody every Wednesday night. Again, I'm not so concerned with who's here and who's not here and how many, etc. Just giving a little bit of, uh, of the word, a little bit of prayer, a little bit of prayer. Well, Charlene, you know what? You don't have to go on every trip. You might go on one or two trips a year. We have meetings maybe once a month. That's it. That's all. You can do it. All right, everybody take care. Hey, Norma, don't forget about church tomorrow night. Don't forget about church tomorrow night. Yeah, Teresa. Deuteronomy chapter 18. Deuteronomy chapter 18. All right, you guys are awesome. Peace out.